and welcome to another edition, the Carnival Weekend edition of For the Record with DJ Abbas. And it's a packed house today. We have a musician, we have a DJ, we have a comedian, actor, dancer, jack of all trades, and we have a boxing champion. Um, Larry Akudayo is in the building, but before we have a, start a chat with him, just, just play a little video about him, get to meet the man. And when, when we come back, we're having a chat with him. Welcome back. And that was Larry Ekundai on video, and we have him live in the studio. How are you doing, bro? Can I shake you safely? <laughs> of course. All you boxers have soft hands. How do you, how do you generate the energy? Um, Look at your hands. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? This is a long... This, I'm wondering why we're taking this long... I know, it's, this long, it's long deal. You, yeah. you, you, always, you always have my fights. And, um, yeah, but better late than never. True. How are you doing? Not bad, thank you. The natural. How did you come by that one, natural? I saw a few clips, everybody alluding to your style, it comes, how it's do you get by that? It's funny, um, the natural, um, I was sparring, even this was before I turned pro, there was this kid, he actually boxed like um, Mike Tyson then, they, it was that. Where was this? This was in Liverpool Street, there's okay. a gym where I used, the gym is shut down now, it's called the Real Fight Club. Um, this kid came, um, he originally meant to spar with one of my mates, and it was like three weights above my weight. Three weights? Yeah. Okay, and don't mess. But, yeah, but my friend wasn't around and was like, oh, can you, can you help move around with it? So I'm like, okay, cool. And um, while I was sparring, there was a lot of people that came to watch the sparring okay. and everyone was just like, who is this kid? And that was it. And my former manager said, before you turn pro, I want you to have a name when you turn pro natural his name is Spencer Ferran you probably yeah, see yeah, him on sure, Sky yeah, Sports yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's, um, the natural so he gave me the name the natural and it stuck yep okay you went into boxing you say um, as a form of self-defense in Nigeria Correct. as a 12 year old so self-defense from what um, funny enough me and my brother if I get paid if I get paid a penny each time me and my brother had a fight I'd probably be a millionaire by now and that's one also. Older brother? Yeah, my other brother. Uh, also, I was born in Army Barracks, um, Shari Toshidi. My dad was in the Nigerian Army. Okay. Um, you definitely got know how to fight. And um, leaving, I mean, leaving Army Barracks to go to Mushi, it was a complete different ball game. An, an upgrade. It was a a boxing upgrade. Yes, it was a complete different ball game. So, um, yeah, so I. I pick up boxing, but I have to keep it low key that my parents didn't know. My mom saw me on the national TV, mm. and um, there was a, a new Coca Cola company that opens in um, Ejibo or something like that. And I, w I did the exhibition bout. Mm -hmm. And um, when she found out. And um, you're living in the same house? Yes, because I always tell her I go to um, lesson after, after school, mm -hmm. but I go to. The boxing gym in it's called Ashimota Boxing Gym yes. in the Lukwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yes, that was it. And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a bit of a skip right. You started off as Bantam, obviously, and then progressed onto Welter. Uh, no, actually, I started. Pe that was on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually started as a flyweight. I mean, a paperweight. 
But like I was really, I was really small. That's like the lightest like, weight, the yeah. The lightest weight. And um, did, um, so I moved to, to uh, what do you call it? Phantom. Uh, no. Moved from there. To fly. To fly weight. I had one fight of fly weight. I overweighed. I meant to do life flight, but I overweight. To fly. To fly. Did fly weight once, then moved to Bantam weight. Okay. And, um, yeah, I uh, won the national champion, the um, national sport festival. Mm hmm uh, so bantamweight got to the national team in 2002. In no, got to the national team in 1998. Okay. Um, 1999 All African Games. Um, I qualify for the All African Games, but I overweight. So okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, so I move up to welterweight. That's a jump. Yes, never been done. Moved to welterweight, then won the 2000 National Sport Festival welterweight. Yeah, represented Nigeria in Germany. Okay. At a light middleweight, won the best boxer in Germany. That's slightly higher, isn't it? Yeah. That's like super Seven welter. That's like yes, super welter. Yes, super welter. Mm. Won the best boxer in the friendly tournament in Germany, but boxed as a welterweight at the Commonwealth Games 2002 Manchester. Okay. So, um, and that was still as amateur. Yes. Now, you, you, apparently you had 125 fights as amateur and you won 100. You had a quite a, what I'm trying yeah. to come at is like you had a very, long career as an amateur yes so um, and that doesn't include my brother me and my brother's fights <laughs> trust me <laughs> and i'm wondering why was that why didn't you turn pro quick enough um well when i came here i had the immigration problem okay. for a very long time for over 10 years whoa um so during the commonwealth games i got signed by a, a promoter called phil Bl philip bloom okay which like people come to like the games to hunt prospect, mm -hmm. and I was one of the lucky ones that was um, got. This was in two thousand and two. In two thousand two, so I was given. So my passport was sent to the Home Office, mm -hmm. which the Home Office then sent me a work permit. Okay. But my coach said they want me to box as an amateur here to establish myself first, first. because you have to be able to sell ticket. Okay. To Tom, to have you turned pro. For you to have a brighter future, you need to be able to sell tickets. So what Build a want, fan base. Yes. So what they want me to do is box as an amateur first okay. to actually um, sell myself to the British fan, to, to the Br British audience. Fan audience. So, so typically, all you've done in Nigeria did not count when no, you arrived here. No. So it's like you're starting a fresh yeah, exactly. again. Exactly. So the work permit got sent back to the home office with my passport saying, no, I just want to box as an amateur. Which is a wrong idea. And that, that lasted and that was how long? Sell that ten over ten years. As an amateur. No, I couldn't even box. I just, so what I, did you do? You went boxing. Had, I had my my daughter um, in 2013. She was born premature. Oh, okay. She had a 40 to 50 percent ch chance of survival, mm -hmm. which she was born two days after my mom passed away in Nigeria. Wow. So I have to. She was an incubator for six months and uh, life support um, oxygen yeah. um, at home for about seven months. After that? After that. So that was the battle. I was so I boxed enough to just sit aside there. Had you had the prize fighting event before that? No. So you had a prize fighting event after that? After that. So I, my passport, so since 2002, my passport got released. I was given my um, state to stay mm -hmm. uh, to stay in the country in 2012. Ten years after. Ten years after, I was 30, and I remember everyone was like too old, too, too old. old. To, I'm, and like, you've been off it for a while as well. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm called a natural. What do you expect? Like, I'm not too old. I'm too young to be old. So I turned pro in 2000. Too young to be old. <laughs> I turned pro in 2012. My passport, my um, paper was sorted in February. Mm -hmm. I had my first pro fight in March 2012. I had another fight in June and I was chucked in prize fighter, which has never been How done. How did that happen? So it's crazy because as a as an athlete, you can't see yourself. Sure. And people from outside just tell me how good I am. I, I don't know how good I am. So people always just tell me, look, you're the best. This, this, this. I thought it was just a hype. But I was chucked in prize fighter. My, um, manager, then Spencer Ferrand, he called me, said, look, I'm putting your prize fight out. I said, are you mad? No, I'm not going to prize fight. I'm going to Nigeria. That was where I actually saw you first. 
prize fighter. <laughs> so um, I said I'm going to Nigeria. Like that would be my first time going to Nigeria. I was already um, planned my visit to Nigeria. I need to see where my mom was buried. Mm. Um, and it's like, look, your mom will be disappointed if you go without competing because you have a better chance. So I'm like, okay, let me see the you. list. Let me see the list of oh. these people. Let me see if I have a chance because no one ever going to a prize fight with two fights. Never exactly, been done. Yeah. So the list alone, the number one favorite, mm -hmm. he had 23 fights, 21 wins, two losses. And the only two fights that he lost was when he fought for world title. So it was, not, it was ranked number 10 in the world. Wow. At As a pro? Yes. At a middleweight. And he, he, had, he boxed at the Commonwealth Games three times. Okay. Was so it was experienced. Yes. So I'm like, then the second guy and like the whole list are really tough guys. And there's another one that everyone's like, oh, yeah, um, he got beat. I mean, he beat Chris Zubin Jr. Everyone mentioned that. But it was a close fight. That's how tough the, the, the um, list was. Yeah. And I'm like, look, I'm not going. I'm not fighting. And he's like, no, your mom will be disappointed. So I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Let's have it. And um, my first fight on that night, that was my third outing. Mm -hmm. I met with the number one favorite. And funny enough, I was the second favorite. I don't know how, but I was the second favorite. For the, for the, for the, for the whole the mini tournament. tournament, yeah. Yeah. So it's an eight man in that night, and you beat one another to the last man standing. No, it's typical prize fighting style, really. Yeah. You know, to the last man drops. And it was, it wasn't, it, it was like a sprint. It's different from doing 12 rounds as a sprint. People are very spiteful in that people want to hurt you so bad. And um, after I beat the favorite, I was just like, this is me, I'm, I'm winning it. Okay, and then, and then you went on to win that. And one would think that right after that, you know. You get signed. When you win prize fighter, because it's a Sky Sport yes, exactly. tournament, yeah. you get signed straight away. Um, okay. I, didn't, I didn't get signed. And, Why was that? Um, because you, people were like, oh, it's racist. No, it's not. But these people said, African and Nigerian don't support their own. It's not about how good you are. And I always say to people, boxing is not about how good you are. People is. move things around for you. You mm. could be the nonsense fighter, but you still get to the chance to fight for a world title. And why do you think there's that apathy within the community to sports, or perhaps to, to boxing? Is um, that because they're not used to it here yet? Or you are the first of many to a trailblazer? No, I, 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 think, I think it's more to do with um, the business side of it. Mm. Professional boxing is a complete business. Yeah. It's not actual boxing as a, as a pure business. Yeah. And you have, to you have to remember, the promoter is talked in a lot of money exactly. to do the show. So you can be a good fighter, but you're not bringing no one to the table. And if we put you in with a prospect, you bang him up. So we're losing money. With a prospect that's got numbers. So there's no point. So we're not going to take And you reckon risk. it's the same rule even at the highest level? Yes, that's the whole. That's how. It, that's how it works. A lot of people don't know this, but that's how it works. So where did it turn for you? You got belt. That's your IBF. You know, European, European. International yeah. Boxing um, Federation for belt. After there. after the the prize fighter, um, I was ranked number two in the country, like literally from nowhere, and um, my youngest daughter was diagnosed of cancer. Whoa. So it's been a roller coaster. So after I left boxing for about two years. And in 2015, start back and um, won the African title mm. against um, Joseph Lamptey. Yes. Um, that was a good night. Yeah, it was. It, <laughs> it was. was a good night. Um, <laughs> won that one and then go on to. I had injury. I had a busted ribs, as yes. I said earlier. And I was lucky because they, they said it was close to like punching my lungs. Oh. Um, but. So I had another fight against Gary Cochran for the WBO. Yes. Um, I was actually training for the Commonwealth Games, mm -hmm. and that's my third time to train for Commonwealth Games. Okay. Um, Commonwealth 32. Yeah. The champion don't want nothing to do with me. And um, so one of my mates said to me, look, if I win it, I'm going to I'm, I'm vacate it for you to fight for it because I know you deserve it. Mm. He fought for British in Commonwealth, okay. so he won the... 
he won the British and Commonwealth and he actually vacated the title. So I'm like, cool, I'm the number one contender for it in Great Britain. And there's another kid in Australia, which is number one, because he had more fights. Mm -hmm. So one and two will fight for the Commonwealth title, okay. which I was training for. And um, unfortunately, he picked on number 12. So he don't want to fight me. He's fighting number 12 instead. I thought it was an order. Yes, no, it doesn't, doesn't work that way, apparently. But he got beat by the number 12. Okay, no. So whoever wins this have to fight me. That's the rules yeah. now. So I was training for the, the kid is called um, Chris George. Mm -hmm. So I was training for Chris George. Four weeks of the fight. While I was training for Chris, someone else was training for me. So he's like sitting, you, you're getting ready for, for an exam. Mm -hmm but you study math instead of your exam is actually English. So got to the four weeks to the fight, I've had an injury actually, which uh, my hand I had to have a surgery. Oh. And um, so the fight was changed. So I'm fighting Gary Cochran, which is the WBO Intercontinental. So whoever wins between me and Gary goes on to fight um, Jeff Horn, mm -hmm. the guy that beat Manny Pacquiao yeah. for the world title. Yeah. So I'm like, cool, I'll take it, I'll beat Gary anyway. Even despite I have one, one bad hand. Got to the fight, got robbed, lost by a point, which everyone was just like, how do, how do you lose that fight? And um, yeah. So how do you deal with a loss? And what comes to my mind right now is Anthony Joshua, who just recently lost the um, World Heavyweight title to someone nobody, just nobody rated. Nobody thought, of course, people thought, okay, you know what we say, he's not meant to win. He doesn't look the part. How do you deal with the loss? Um, and his was quite a heavy loss as opposed to yours, which was just a point it's, decision. It's, um, it's just a way, it's like a life. It's, it's the whole life living, have to understand that going to, it's like going to war. Mm. And losing doesn't mean, mean you're not good enough. It teaches you a lesson. Mm. So, even though I, I know I won the fight and a lot of people know I, I won the fight, but I've learned something from it. That, that losing gives you more experience, it's mad. That's when you actually see it back. And that's in, your first professional yes, loss, that's, right? That's yeah. my first and only. Your only loss, yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, um, just, just sit back. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Pick yourself back up. But the saddest thing in boxing is when you lose, people so quickly to criticize you. Mm. And find every. You reckon Anthony is going through the same as well? Hundred percent. People who's going to talk bad about him and straight away even comment on this um, thing. People are just like, yeah. "What is this?" He lost, and at least I lost by a point. Anyone could get knocked out, or you can get knocked out by people. Funny enough, I have a teammate that said, "Oh my opponent, I knocked them out by mistake." He was so good, but he still reckoned he knocked them out by mistake. The one lucky punch. Yeah, but how do you knock? Nine people out by mistake. You definitely see that you have the power. It's got but, there was something in, in the radar and his punch. But accident happens and loss teaches you how to be a better fighter. Hmm. Um, I'm going to talk about, um, as, as we're winding up right now, we'll talk about um, your, your forthcoming fight. But I want us to talk about Nigeria. You've been to Nigeria. In, in the course of this journey, you've kind of like taken, up, taken on a self-style campaign to kind of go to Nigeria, let them know what you're about, and then maybe try and also use that to kind of like build. What's the state of boxing in Nigeria? Um, not good. Uh, I will be honest with you. Not good. Uh, you know, um, it's sad that Nigeria don't like when you tell the truth, which is crazy. If we compare ourselves to Ghana, mm. look how many world champions Ghanaian produce. Mm. And when was the last time we had a world champion? The last world champion we had was... What's Samuel Ghana Peter. doing differently? This, they invested in, in their fighters. And I know a few, one of my friends, he just literally lost his, um, um, his world title. His Ghanaian based here, won the ABA, go back home, the Tom Pro, had a fight, bring people from abroad, come to Tom Town and fight. Like sell him to the to the local audience, yeah. Exactly. So, 
and also... And why is that difficult to do in Nigeria? It shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. And also, having sports is the, the only, one of the only things that I think, apart from music or, or, or movies or actors, I think sports is the only thing that unites everyone in the world. Indeed. It doesn't matter where you're from. So having to have a big fight in our hometown will help improve our economy. No doubt. So, for example, when Mayweather fight in Vegas, each time he fight in Vegas, he generate at least one billion dollars. One billion, not million, one billion. So imagine having a big fight in Nigeria. We have all our big fighters, all our big fighters all over the world. We have the UFC guys, we have, we have boxers yes. all over the world but they can come back home if they know they're going to get looked after properly. Mm. Let's bring up on it back home. Let's encourage the youth. Let's give them something to look forward to. Mm. And not everyone's going to be a world champion, True. but you can be a better person and be... And build a base. And build a base. And just let's encourage these young youth rather than fighting and going to jail. You can actually earn a good money. Um, you have a fight coming up real soon. Yes. Tell us about that. Um, it's been pushed back twice now, okay. um, which is a bit sad. It's meant to happen in Nigeria, right? It's meant to happen in Nigeria. Uh, it's almost a year now that I haven't, I haven't, I haven't boxed, okay. which is... Every time I call you in the gym, though. Exactly. <laughs> you have to stay ready. Um, okay. Is that a challenge? It, it is, and it's very Mental, frustrating. Yeah. It's really, mm. really frustrating. It's like hot and cold, but you can't, keep, you can't take your foot off the gas. You never know, opportunity might just surface. Um, so now I'm planning on fighting for the IBO Intercontinental in Nigeria. Okay. In Nigeria, which um, originally the plan was fight for the IBO Intercontinental. So in June, God willing, win that, which I believe I will win, then fight the South African kid that actually owned the, that was the champion then. He just literally mm -hmm. lost the IBO um, world title. Okay in June. So that was the plan to fight him in Nigeria at the end of the year. Okay. That was the plan, but things didn't go according to the plan, but still keep my eye on, on, on the on the price and looking to fight in Nigeria in October 13th. Okay. Um, God really win that. And the, the title order now is German fighter. Okay. Um, I can't remember what his name is, but yeah. We, Awesome. Be glad to actually fight him, to challenge him for his, for his belt. Okay, we'll be looking forward to that. It's been great having you in the studio, champ. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Yes, still to come, Zinni X and DJ KYS, but then my next guest will be the dancer, the comedian, the actor, the all-in-one, Kofi Daguru. He has a show in London and in the UK this weekend as well, so stay tuned.